and you mentioned you, um, art science. So can we get onto that topic and can you share a bit yes, about please. what is art science collaboration essentially? Mm -hmm. um, well, just for a, a bit of background to anyone listening. So um, I'm first and foremost an art historian and I'm approaching this conversation as an art historian. Um, I've looked at the history of science and the history of art, specifically with color theory and um, how we perceive colors. And in my work and in talking to various arts artists, scientists collaborating together with communities that I've worked with, um, this really interesting thing about art science convergence or collaboration is almost the necessity of holding those pillars steady and strong in order for them to collaborate. For instance, you couldn't have two things that were the same collaborate, that would just be the same. And so interestingly enough, it's the expertise that's offered by the artist, by the scientist, that gives such a fruitful um, meet, gathering, a fruitful meeting. But um, with the terms art and science, they're really troublesome for me, as I'm sure they are for many. I mean, the term art itself was a 19th century um, invention. Uh, before that, art, or like arts in the Latin, was actually craft. And before that, um, art was, if you were an artist, it's because you were a craftsperson, you worked with your hands, like the painters, the sculptors. Um, and so artist was completely different. It was only after you had um, Alberti's... Uh, Lives of the Artist, sorry, that took a second. <laughs> his book, Lives of the Artist, where he started to um, talk about, you know, the genius artists, you know, his friends, Michelangelo, Raphael, that he was like, no, these are, you know, the artists. And that word took on different meaning. And it was only in about 1833 when William Wevel used the term scientist as a way to group different um different professions that were emerging, such as like the engineer, the mathematician, um, the biologist, and all these different ones. And he would say, as the painter, musician, and sculptor is an artist, so is the engineer, mathematician, and um, biologist uh, a scientist. And I'm paraphrasing those examples, but he said that um, to give a, a, a weight to the other side, because he saw these... Um, things that were like each other, but different specializations, and were grouped already under the term kind of the art. And whereas everything was considered an art because an art was a way to craft your skill. So if you were skillful in something, it was an art. But Webel kind of put that away to group these specific things that were taking on what was being developed as the scientific method um, and finding the more empirical truth in the world as they saw it leading to the enlightenment that um that the word scientist kind of emerged because scientia just used to mean knowledge so those words definitely took a divergence but not as far back as we think so a lot of the examples and the reason i love looking at the history is because the examples will show just how taking skill and taking knowledge are not they're not opposing principles um they actually are incorporated into each just one has grown into this as the same kind of a creative emotional um industry of the arts versus the kind of cold um and not cold in a in a negative way but then the needing it to be objective in as much as it can be um, lacking the person and more the results of the science and the scientist. Um, and those, those, that divergence, which, you know, C.P. Snow did in his, in his two cultures lecture, talking about those two different things, um, and how we combine them, it, it sounds like you're trying to move mountains to bring two, um, antithetical concepts together, when really, uh, if we go back to the roots of those words and the roots of that of the beginnings, then you are bringing people together with their version of their expertise to inquire about the world, which is how it all started. <laughs> so um, forget the beginning of your question, but when I think of art and science, I get stuck in this terminology because finding a common ground is finding a common language. And I find that if we talk about the origin of this language and we're able to explore those terms, it brings people closer together. We don't feel as isolated from each other. So that's what I, I like to do a lot when I look into the history of art and the history of science. What did it mean in their time and how can we learn from that today?
That's it for this episode of Beyond Codes and Aesthetics. If you like what you heard, you can subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever else you listen to your podcasts. Also, please take a moment to rate and review this podcast. It will help other listeners discover what we're doing. Beyond Codes and Aesthetics is produced by Kohei and Translations on Himalaya Podcasts by Will Jung. Take care and see you next time.